Hi everyone, we're here at the Winter Fancy Food Show in San Francisco, California. And I'm here with Miyoko Shinner of Miyoko's Kitchen. Welcome. Nice well, to have you. Well, thanks for having me. Tell us, you know, what's been going on with Miyoko's and some of the new products you have. We've always had these premium items and now we're sort of introducing cheese and butter for the masses at a lower price point, allergen free, based on legumes and oats. So we are really, really taking the art of fermentation to a whole new level, playing around with all sorts of substrates that we can transform from plants into cheese and other dairy products. Can you tell us a little bit about how you've paced innovation? What does that look like? We've got a growing innovation team. They are super, super talented, and they're just discovering all sorts of fascinating things that plants can do. And they're learning all about plants, proteins, and starches, and, and so we're really, really excited about what's going on there. Your products are 100% whole foods, right? Tell us what that looks like, you know, the balance between using natural ingredients and mm -hmm. then intervening sort of with these new technologies. Yeah, so absolutely, you know, it's really a marriage of old technology with the new. So we're taking these sort of time-honed techniques like, you know, they've used in, in cheese making for thousands of years, such as fermentation, uh, understanding how enzymes work on proteins, and then we're applying it to plants. And that puts a whole new twist on it. So we do have to add some modern food science to that. And it's, it's a deep dive into this, this whole new world of, of creating foods out of things that you never would have thought you could have done. Initially, we wanted to prove that a vegan cheese was not a laughable concept, that it was actually worthy of respect. And so I wanted to set a high bar with uh, gold standard premium products that commanded a high price point. But then it became, uh, you know, it, it became our mission to make sure that these products were available to everybody. And so we had to bring down the price point, and that's where we went from nuts, expensive cashews, pasteurized organic cashews, to uh, oats and legumes and other ingredients that would make uh, it a more affordable price point. Mm -hmm. And you felt like the quality of that matched the original quality, even with those oh, new ingredients. I mean, they're pretty amazing. They really, really are. And they have the functionality that the cashew cheeses didn't have, which is to melt into just absolute in divine ways. I'm wondering what you think has held back the plant-based cheese category before this. I think we're still in the nascency of plant-based cheeses. And we're gonna start seeing them take market share away from animal dairy over time, just as fluid in the fluid milk category, the almond milk and soy milks have taken you know, market share away from animal dairy. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see the same thing. We're just running about 10 years behind. And you mentioned the move into conventional. What has the trajectory looked like for you in terms of distribution? In natural, we've been killing it. That's great. But now we see the biggest white space in conventional where we're growing in faster there than even in, in, uh, in natural. So I think, you know, places like Walmart, Target, Kroger, they are putting so many resources towards plant-based and organic. I think that's really where the growth is going to be. We have to be loyal to the early adopters, to the, the vegans and the plant-based community that supported us in the, in the very beginning. And so we are going to take care of them. But we also have to resonate with uh, the everyday consumer outside of that, the flexitarian, the lactose intolerant, um, you know, the people that just want to do meatless Mondays. And we've got to be able to satisfy their needs. And another product you'll be launching starting in food service is a pizza cheese. Ah, yes, so that's, that's our secret. Yes, it's so exciting. Have you had that yet? Not yet. Oh, and you know, right. that's a super mm -hmm. exciting concept because obviously we see the plays of impossible foods and beyond meat in the, in the food service sector. Yep. Um, you know, what do you think that's going to do for your business? Well, we're actually making a huge play for food service this year. In order for us to make the biggest impact possible, we have to solve the issues of the most popular foods in the world. And that's things like burgers and pizza. Uh, burgers have been taken care of by Beyond and Impossible and many others, but we got to solve the pizza problem really fast. And that's what we intend to do this year, working with QSRs and some other local pizza chains. In terms of emerging brands trying to get into this category, do you think that's just the most logical way to think of it in order to scale? I think, you know, Beyond and Impossible really, really smart in just targeting something as uh, ubiquitous as burgers. And I think we need to do that. I think plant-based cheeses have been um, more on the process side or the ultra premium side up until now. But we still haven't been able to nail the nutritional profile that people are looking for, the clean uh, ingredient profile that people are looking for, and the everyday application that people are looking for. Mm -hmm. 
you know, aside from these product launches, which are very exciting, you have a lot else going on. A new investment mm -hmm. recently from Ellen DeGeneres and Portia de Rossi. Mm -hmm. You're scaling up your R&D, obviously, building out a new facility. You're converting a dairy farm yes, as trying. well. Tell us yep. a little bit of what's going on with that. So we thought, what a cool idea if we could partner with a California dairy farmer uh, that's you know maybe not doing as well as they have in the past and help them convert to growing crops that can become part of our R&D and supply chain and provide them with a livelihood, provide them with educational know-how, and they can stay true to the land and it's a win-win for all. So we're creating an open source model that other businesses that want to help the world, that want to help farmers can uh, partake in. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us here at the Winter Fancy Food Show. It's great to see you and catch up in person, and I look forward to seeing what's next. Well, thanks a lot, Beth. It was a lot of fun talking to you. Of course. Thanks so much for watching NOSH. Don't forget to hit subscribe and ding that bell.